I'm Esther Flammer. I'm the Vice President of Worldwide Span Generation for a software company called Conga. Back in April, around my birthday, I found um, a, like a tiny little ball. It wasn't even like a lump. And I've had one of them before and they had biopsied it and it was just a cyst. And so that's what I thought it was. So I just kind of didn't think anything about it and just kind of went on with my life. And then about a month later, I was in London and it was in May. I was traveling again for work and I felt that it had grown bigger um, into actually a lump. And that's when I got started to get pretty concerned. So I called my doctor and then they called the pathology department. And uh, the results came in and they were, um, they were positive for breast cancer for DCIS, which is ductal carcinoma in situ. My doctor said, you know, it's kind of crazy, you know, for a 35 year old to get breast cancer. I would recommend you go in and get genetic testing um, and find a good specialist. Through our research, we found um, Virginia Borges, and, and she specializes in breast cancer in young women. And at that point, um, with it being DCIS and it being contained, it was basically down to either doing a lumpectomy or a mastectomy, and just doing surgery to remove, remove the, the lump. I got the surgery scheduled in July, the beginning of July, um, did the mastectomy, and then waited for the biopsy results. We got the biopsy results back, and the bad news was that they had found a microscopic cancer cell in one of the sentinel lymph nodes that they removed, which means that it had shown signs of spreading. And then the results also came back as triple negative, um, which is a pretty rare form of breast cancer, and it makes it difficult because you can't treat it with hormones and it has the highest likelihood of recurrence within the first three to five years. You never know how you're gonna to react to news like you have cancer. You never know how you're going to react and respond to going through chemo. Getting cancer makes you kind of evaluate your life and determine, you know, are you living the best you can possibly live? It, it definitely makes you kind of look at your life and make sure that you're doing <laughs> you're doing all the right things as best as possible um, and living living life without regret I wanted to live as normal of a life as possible that was that was my goal was I'm not gonna feel like a cancer patient I'm not gonna feel like I'm a chemo patient um, I'm gonna be a mom and a wife and you know a manager and <laughs> And, and, and live my life how I want to, right? And li live my life how I would normally live, even without cancer. My husband Gordon and I have been married for almost 10 years. And um, we have two boys, Corbin and Kingston, and they are five years old and three years old. So we have our hands full, but <laughs> they're a lot of fun. I would say some of the challenges um, in going through cancer treatment and that whole journey, it was really hard for my family. I think for my mom and for my husband, watching someone that you love that much going through cancer and going through that much pain and treatment, I think it was, sometimes I think it was harder for them than it was for me actually going through it. You don't go through cancer, you don't go through treatment completely unscathed. It affects you physically, it affects you emotionally and mentally. Focusing on the positive, focusing on this is temporary and I'm going to get through this and a year from now and five years from now and ten years from now this will be a distant memory and it'll just be a part of my story. The advice that I have is, is really about attitude and your mentality. Don't let it get you down, you know. Focus on, focus on the blessings in your life. It's only for a short while, and then you'll be stronger.